Welcome to week 30 of the weekly drone news updates. And this week I've got some important topics. The first one is the FA that is making some changes to the way that they're going to administer the uh, FA written exam. The next one is the proliferation of anti-drone technology out there. Somebody shared a link and I want to talk about this. Then we'll talk about the remote ID. There is a standard that's supposed to come out next week. So that's a good, uh, good step forward. And then we'll talk about drones being used to look up for survivors in New Zealand on the volcano. And I'll give you a quick update on Pilot Institute and something that we just did that was uh, pretty cool. So let's get started. First thing this week is the FA that said that as of January 13 of 2020, they will require all the applicants to uh, have an FTN number before they go for the written exam. Now the FTN number is nothing new, it's something that you already have if you have an account with IACRA, but in the past what you did is you created the account after, after passing your written exam, now you're gonna have to create the account before you pass your written exam. Now this is really all there is to it. There's not a whole big deal right here, like some people are making it sound, it's really not all that difficult. So that's really the main change. Now, I did make a video to talk about this because there are some more changes that are coming up uh, that uh, again, not really that big of a deal, but it's something that you need to be comfortable with and familiar with so that when you take either do your, your retake exam or when you do your initial part 107, you know how to do it, okay? This only applies to part 107 remote pilots. Uh, this does not apply to hobbyists, okay? If you're a hobbyist, skip that section. You don't have to worry about it. Now, one of the things that the, SA, the FA has said that I think has created some chatter is the fact that they are using a new system and using that new system, they actually will have the ability to do different types of questions. Now, they didn't really go into a whole lot of details, but what they said is that there could be scenario-based training questions in the future because they did mention the, the fact that they will have the ability to do scenario-based um, stuff. That's really all they said. So it's kind of dark, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that there's going to be some changes to the way the written exam is done, but not for right now. Okay. For right now, all they've said is that as of January, 2020, you need to have that number before you schedule your exam and that's it. So if you want more information about this, I recommend that you take a look right here at this video that I made earlier and uh, you can see all the details. It's about 10 minutes long and it explains everything in detail that you need to know. Okay. Let's talk about the next topic. And this is something that somebody, one of you, uh, Rob actually, shared with me in the comments of last week's video. And uh, this is an article talking about the growth of anti-drone technology. It looks like the number of anti-drone technology out there is growing like moss on a tree in the Pacific Northwest, okay? Uh, this is just, they, they said that there was 537 uh, counter drone system out there and, um, and that a lot of them were using what we call frequency jamming. And um, some of them were using nets. There's a whole lot of different types of, of technology. Now, the purpose of these systems is to take down the drones that are rogue, the drones that are gonna be a danger to society, to someone, to an event or whatever it is. Now, the way that they're going to do this is uh, some of them are using jamming technology. Now, the downside with jamming technology is the fact that in the US it's still very illegal because of FCC regulation. Another thing to consider with jamming technology is the fact that these things are not targeting just one drone. They're targeting an area. Some of them were advertising 15 kilometers. Now, 15 kilometers is about eight, almost nine miles, or actually a little over nine miles. And um, um, if you're gonna be jamming signals for that long, you're going to be affecting also manned aircraft and then anything else in the path. So not really that great of an idea. And also remember that frequency jamming is really doing nothing for drones that are gonna be on a path. Now, if you think about somebody who wants to do something stupid with a drone or somebody that wants to uh, create damage with a drone, they're likely not going to be flying the drone manually. They're likely gonna put it on autopilot and then let it crash into whatever it is that they wanna hurt, okay? So these technologies, um, I think it's just uh, a business where people are seeing a big opportunity. There hasn't been anything bad happen with drone yet, and we know it's only a matter of time. And uh, what this really makes me think about is what are these companies willing to go through in order to make their system a necessity rather than just something sitting on a shelf at the moment. So that's just something to ponder for, uh, for you guys. 
Let's talk about something a little bit more joyful, which is remote ID. Now, remote ID, we've talked about this over and over again. Um, and uh, last couple of weeks, I said that the FA is working on an NPRM, a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, and that's supposed to come out in actually December this month. I haven't seen it yet, but when that does, then you'll have the opportunity to submit a, com a comment on remote ID in the system. Now, in the meantime, ASTM, which is a company that creates standards for a lot of different things, uh, ASTM uh, said that they're coming up with the standards next week. So I wonder if that's actually a hint that when these standards come out, the FA will also come out with the NPRM. Uh, so we'll find out. We'll find out next week. If I hear more, I'll let you know. The fact that ASTM is coming with standards is great. Um, ASTM came up with standards for the parachutes, for example. Parachutes for drones are all governed by ASTM. The FAA says that if you follow the standards that ASTM created, then we'll give you a waiver to fly over people, okay? So that's an example of what ASTM is gonna do out there. Now, in terms of the standards, a little preview is they said that the, uh, one of the standard was gonna be that the drone is going to transmit the ID, their location, their speed, and their direction over a wireless network. And then you'll have the signal is gonna be able to be picked up by uh, someone with the right software and be able to find out where the drone is located. What had a lot of you talking, and me included, was the fact that um, we don't want really people to know where the drone operator is gonna be located and not everyone should have access to that information. This creates a major danger for, major danger? Major danger for the people on the ground and, um, and this is not something that we should have to deal with. So this is very much in line, that standard so far with what DJI had presented a couple weeks ago that got a lot of people talking. And um, this is um, something that we'll see. We'll see how it works. Remote ID is advertised to be the next step in making what we call more complex operation become more routine. And if that happens, then we're gonna have a lot more freedom to fly our drones out there, hopefully. I'm, I'm always kind of an optimist, so I'm, I'm hoping that this is where we're going towards. Something a little grim, but I want to talk about it because I think it's a, it's a good use of the technology. Uh, you probably heard about the eruption of the volcano on White Island in New Zealand and how uh, I think it was 2,000 people were stranded on the island after the volcano erupted. Unfortunately, eight people died and the, uh, the rescue, search and rescue people were actually using drones to find out where the bodies were located so they can uh, minimize the amount of time that the personnel was going to be out there to go recover the bodies. Uh, this is not necessarily something I would uh, qualify as drones for good, even though it is doing a lot of good things for the search and rescue people on the ground that are putting their lives at risk to go rescue these bodies. So um, uh, just something that I wanted to mention out there. Okay, let's end this with a positive note. You can now gift the courses on Pilot Institute to anyone that you like. And this is actually great news because uh, we're right around Christmas. If you want like uh, somebody who just got a drone in your family and you want them to be educated on how to fly their drone safely, guess what? We've got a course for that. It's called Drone Flying 101 and they'll learn everything about the regulation, the airspace and what they can do and what they can do and make them a much safer pilot. Uh, if you ask me, there should be a course or a kind of course that is required for everyone to take before they get up in the air. And we're offering this for only 25 bucks right now. So if you want to make this um, a stocking, uh, put that in somebody's stocking, then you can actually buy the course as a gift and then give them a little gift card and then they'll have access to that course. You can also gift our Drones Maneuvers course and then obviously the Part 107. If you are Part 107 and you like the course, then give it to someone that uh, you want to get educated and become a better pilot. So uh, the second piece of good news is I'm working currently on the course. I've been recording this whole entire week and uh, we have a new course that's gonna be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Now I have, uh, we have to go through the editing process, which takes a little bit of time and then we'll be releasing a new course very soon. It's a pretty big course and it's a pretty important course. Lots of people have been asking about it for a while, so I'm excited that this is right around the corner. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say what it's about just yet. So this is it. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the channel as always. We're growing and growing very fast. Uh, love to see all the comments from people every week. And uh, this is all I have for now. Have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next week.